this might not necessarily be a revelation from God, but it might be. But I'm just putting it out there as my idea, opinion, concept, belief of what probably happened regarding the fall of the angels, which led to the fall of man. And that has to do with the individuality of our God. And that each one that he has created is an individual, including the devil. And there was a problem because the devil did not appreciate that there was someone else besides him, including his God. I think this offended him. It first offended him that he wasn't the only one because it describes him as the most beautiful in all his, his, his virtues and talents were supreme in every way. So why would God need someone else? So God creates someone else, other angels. So out of his resentment, out of his jealousy, he does what you see a lot of times in a lot of places, job environments, family environments. It can happen anywhere. It can happen in, in a sports team where... They call it a cancer. This one person, a discontent, a malcontent, I think they call him, gets in there and just starts complaining, ridiculing, saying how everything is bad. And then sometimes they get a bunch of people to follow them. And that is kind of the picture of what I see as what he did. So he could be the one, at least. There might be others, but at least he would be the one at the top. And then he came here and he did it to us. And he tried to do it to God by diminishing God, diminishing His and our Creator by watering Him down, by suggesting that you could add to the number of God, that there would be more than one God, that God alone was not enough. And He, in essence, really destroyed our individuality because your, your individuality isn't just that you are one, that you are a person. You have to have an identity in something. And our identity is in our Creator. So if our Creator is this amorphous blob, this malleable thing, this committee of three people or whatever, I'm like Him, there's no, there's no individuality in that. I'm just a mix in this, in this thing, this organization. Whereas when your identity is in the Creator, that accentuates your individuality. You are one that the one God made with intention. He did that on purpose. He had a thought. That thought was of you. And he designed and created you. And when you understand that and you believe that, your individuality is made supreme. It is made the most it, it can be. You are your most individual self when you identify yourself in your creator. By definition, I can't get into explaining all the detail of that, but just ponder on that, meditate on that, think about that, why that would be. If you think about your identity, otherwise your identity is in what you pick, whatever it is. This organization, that religion, this sports team, these hobbies... This family, this name, these are all things that you can pick. There's only one thing that you can identify with that is eternal, always has been, and always will be, and will never go away. Because all that other stuff, families and names and teams and organizations and religions, it's all going away. So that means if you have your identity in that or any, any selection of all of the above or some of the above, your identity is temporary it's temporary it's like a mist so it's it's in essence it's empty it's vain it's nothing but when you have your identity in that one who said this one will exist and then he created you you have your individuality in its purest form i shouldn't shouldn't have said supreme but in its purest form the purest form of individuality is knowing who your God is and understanding that He desired for you to be and then He 
caused you to be. And those are the two realities that will go on forever. He is your God and creator. And he wanted you to be. He created you. And so, really you can say all understanding emanates from that. All, it comes from that. From that root understanding. That you are an individual and your God is an individual. Because what the devil did by attempting to water down our God, he didn't in reality. But in our eyes... He watered down and diminished our God by suggesting that there could be others like Him. He watered us down too. You lose your individuality because now you're trusting this fake one, this false one, this one who invented religion. That's what religion is all about. That's the purpose it serves is to, to detach us and depersonalize our relationship with our God. But it gives us something to struggle against so that we can see the stark difference between our God and religion. Because it is stark. It is immensely stark. And if you, you identify yourself in your religion, you, you will see, if you're honest, you see, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. You'll see that you're standing on quicksand. You're standing on nothing. You have no firm grounding. What you have is people around you that will amen and confirm the lie that you believe. You will get support from others. But the truth that comes only from the one who is the truth himself is something you can never lose. and will never be shaky ground. It will always be firm. So if you find yourself wobbling and unstable, you know it's for a reason. It's because you're not looking to and trusting in that one who is the rock of your salvation, of your life, of your identity, of your individuality of everything. In Jesus' name, amen.